I am naked and I am hungry. <laughs> <laughs> like, like David, you have no idea how quickly I just threw myself out of my shower and just threw a towel on and I was like, all right, just dry myself real quick. I got my shake in and then right afterwards, I just slapped, my, slapped some boxers on me and I was like, all right, I'm ready. And I don't care. Like, I, I'm like, I, I don't know. This episode may as well be like a filler throwaway today. It's just because like, well, uh, uh, by the way, guys, welcome, uh, you know. Welcome to the Double D Experience, uh, David. Yes. What is our what is our slogan that you always tell us? Uh, sometimes funny, sometimes serious, but always off the cuff. I gotta memorize that. Because <laughs> like I was literally about to say those lines, but then I drew a blank. I was like something, something off the cuff. And then I just gave it to you. I was like, yeah, you say because like I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, forty episodes in, you know, you'll learn it eventually. <laughs> Watch well, like 40 more. It's just like, so Dennis, did you memorize our uh, show's slogan? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> you like Channing Tatum in fucking 21 Jump Street, how he's a cop who doesn't know his Miranda rights? <laughs> you think most cops know their Miranda rights? I think it's the only thing they have memorized besides, you know, how to beat up minorities. Mm. But I'm that, that, that is, this is true. You know, David, I really wonder, like, if, like, one day you're going to have, like, let's say if uh, you get a friend and he turns out to be, like, a, uh, like a police officer. Right. And he, uh, like, I-, I wonder, like, would you, would you say a lot of the jokes you say about cops now? I mean, if he is, like, a wholesome guy and he, like, he is, like, a good cop. It's like, wait, you know, wait, 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 like, like, like a cop going undercover, like a Smash tournament, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, he's yeah, undercover if- at Smash tournaments to try to take down a bunch of pedophiles. Yeah, exactly. And he's just like, and you, like, meet him at the uh, after party, like, afterwards, and you're just kind of like, it's like, hey, like, you know, uh, I didn't get your name. It's like, oh, my name's uh, Ron, I was going to say Swanson, but Ron Johnson, that's fine. <laughs> oh, Ron Johnson, what a, what a basic name, man. Uh, what's what, what's uh, what's your what's your tag? Uh, uh, Pedophile hunter. <laughs> que amos! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Suavemente, besame. I actually really like it. Que quiero sentir tus labios besándome. Suavemente, besame. Que quiero sentir tus labios besándome otra vez. Pretty good. Es suave. <laughs> All right, guys, episode's over. Later. <laughs> Honestly, you guys got a two-hour episode last week. I have a lot of things to do. I'm going to be busy. I have to eat. I'm going to be busy all day tomorrow. We are recording this on the Wednesday before the episode goes up. Yes. And I have a class tonight. I'm busy all day tomorrow. That leaves me literally only tonight when I get home from my class late at night to edit it. So... This episode, you probably noticed, is a little bit short. You guys got a two-hour episode last week. It, yeah. it balances out. Here it, you go. Uh, uh, and we don't... Uh, it, we say it's going to be short, and it is going to be short, but, like, you know, for all we know, you might even get, like, less than an hour right now from us because of how fucking <laughs> up the ass, like, time has got us, like, right now. Like, Honestly, today. Honestly, yeah, yeah. It's like... Uh, Wouldn't that be the first episode that'd be less than an hour for us then if if let's no say we, uh, nope our first ever episode was under an hour i think it was like 45 minutes because we didn't know what the fuck we were doing the the Aerith <laughs> one the Aerith one yeah that was only like 45 minutes right let me check no I'm, i think that was at least an hour i think hour and oh, hold on a second oh Ow. wait hold on hour and Windows 11 is updating. Stop it, Windows. Oh, no, 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 no. I was wondering what that sound was on the back. Apparently, there's some setting with, like, Windows 11 that, like, fucks with, uh... That, like, fucks with, um, some... Not a microphone setting. Like, it wouldn't be anything to do with the podcast. It's a... (laughs) Oh, I remember. It's, like, for the Nintendo GameCube adapter drivers. Oh, no! Apparently, they're not supported on Windows 11. I mean, yet. Yeah, yeah, but like uh, yeah, as of but, right yeah. now, it's like it's fucked. Yeah, so you want to play? Fur, uh, you want to play uh, some melee? You want to play some melee on Slippy? You want to play Nick All Stars? You better not update yeah, that you're, shit. You're shit. You're shit out of luck. Yeah, literally, <laughs> just don't update the fucking. Yeah, just don't. Oh, oh that makes me sad because I literally have my fucking adapter, and I was thinking of playing some GameCube games. Fuck. <laughs> well, I'm. Sh- there's got to be a way around it. I don't know, but it's like, you know, it's either you try to find a workaround or you essentially just wait until someone releases a uh, a patch to, like, whatever firmware or uh, software you use. Basically. 
but that's your only two options because yeah unless you're like a uh, software engineer maybe but yeah. i mean even then it's like you know that's not your product that you're touching around that's yeah. another guy's the program that changes it is called uh zadig i think there was a few others i think too um yeah there was there's a couple of them yeah that i remember uh using oh by the way you with. were you were right the episode is over an hour David, I'm always fucking right. I could have I sworn it was a, our test episode was only forty. Yeah, exactly. Minutes. That's that's what you were thinking of. Yeah, because yes, like yes. I, I I do remember uh, recording something before the Aerith one. So like, it was <laughs> the Aerith. The, the, e. <laughs> the Ace. I, I'm still more of a Tifa person, but I, mm, that reminds that's me. Just I gotta. Me. That reminds me. I gotta update the. Uh, I eventually gotta update the trailer, like our podcast trailer. I feel like because I I made that like when the. Uh, the uh, test episode was the only footage we had, and now I think I can put a bunch of different clips in there instead. Oh, yeah, uh, update that shit for sure. But um, yeah, Zadig is the program. Mm. So like, if yeah, you play, yeah. if you're planning to use your GameCube controller for some shit, like you're a melee player, you're playing Slippy, or you're a Nick All Stars player, more likely because that's a recent game. Uh, <laughs> don't you just don't up just don't update to Windows 11 yet, mm. or or at all. Yeah, and also like uh, I knew that. Uh, I don't know, funny story about Windows 11. It was just like, I, I was on my computer one day, and I was so, like, I don't know, it was just one of those days where I'm just so fucking bored. And I was like, I wonder, wonder what Windows 11 looks like. And I saw a couple of pictures on their site, and like, the FAQ about like, you know, why you should uh, download Windows 11. And uh, like, I love the one thing that they had for gamers, where it's like, it makes your games faster, essentially. And like, um, it uses your hardware a lot uh, faster. Um, something I've also about storage, I think. Um, oh, I think the was... taskbar is in the center, like a Mac. Yeah, yeah looks... and I, I, the thing is, too, like, when I saw the, um, when the update finished and I saw the new UI, I, <laughs> the first thing uh, that I remember was that my taskbar is always set on auto hide. So yeah. it's always just like, uh, what do you call it? Like, just never there unless yeah, like, I yeah, hover yeah, my yeah, mouse yeah. over. So when it came up, I was like, oh, <laughs> And also, my fucking screen is huge as fuck, too. So, it's, like, literally, it barely even gets, like, a bit of the center. So, I was, like... Because the whole time, I was looking at the left... Bottom left corner. Thinking that I'd see the win- the, the Windows uh, button, like, on the <laughs> bottom left. And I'm, like... And then I'm, like, where the fuck is it? And for some reason, like, it wasn't until, like, I just shifted my vision, like, literally two inches to the right. That I see, like, everything that I have, like, on the taskbar. It just all in the center. And, I mean... I think... Um, I, and again, I, I'm no, uh, what I'm about to say is like coming off as a guy, like who's just like, my initial thoughts are real, like unga boonga t- like type shit when it comes to at least windows 11. And I personally thought at the very least it, um, I do like the, uh, the UI change a bit. I think it definitely looks sleeker if anything, but I'm yeah. like, as, I, I like as if windows 10 wasn't already sleek, but like I, I have a, um, very s- creeping feeling that like Microsoft kind of saw like how much people love uh, the like Apple's uh, UI, which I think, I mean, coming from me, like I- I've used both um, Apple a little less, obviously, but like um, the few times that I've used the uh, Apple computer, like I always thought that the UI was actually pretty, pretty good. Like it wasn't like bad uh, by any means. I had no problem with both either. It was just yeah. like, like I, but I also kind of get like you know why people prefer um, Max uh, when they argue that oh the UI looks better and everything and I'm like if that's your like I mean people have multiple reasons as to why they choose Max over um, Windows and for me I choose the latter because uh, or I like I, I'm flipped on that because like you know I'm I, I game and Macs are not very well known to be great with games uh, so uh, uh, no and uh that's why like i mean for others like when it comes to productivity and i argued this before like when it comes to like certain tasks um max are just better suited it's just it's uh, got like a bigger price tag on it and i still remember there was this one video uh recently some kid's mac literally caught fire and he had the fucking like literally like <laughs> bring it yeah, like he caught fire during class and he had to literally th- like uh take it outside and just let it simmer and burn to death and he like was literally just recording his Mac like being burning like be- literally burning from the inside out. And um I uh I remember 
I was just laughing so hard because it's like it reminds me of that one time where uh, remember those Samsung phones that like basically exploded? Yeah. And like <laughs> how it like almost started like a whole like um government investigation because like people were really scared that like you know oh shit like you know these are basically like terrorist devices like <laughs> especially on planes and shit so Yeah. They, they basically were like clamping down on them and saying like you know like no Samsung. I think it was the 7 I believe that was the yeah that was the model number that um they basically said like uh no uh, no sevens are allowed on the uh on air on commercial airlines and stuff wow. which wow so I mean you could you could look up that video because I, I saw it in passing and it was just like the kid literally like just was recording his thing being burned from the inside out and it was. Like it kind of, he kind of cut the footage every now and then because like that's how long it was like a very slow death for his laptop and, and like not to mention like yo I, I don't know if it was the one of the newer ones but dude that's easily if it's like the MacBook Pro that's like practically easy two thousand bucks that like that's just down the now, fucking shitter yeah that's just dead yeah uh, like it, it's just. <sighs> If that shit burning to death ain't symbolic of something, <laughs> I, I swear to God, like, dude, like, you're, you're gonna call me, like, you're, you're probably gonna call me your favorite F word for this, <laughs> but, um, I honestly, God, think that, like, that Mac burning like that is symbolic of how if humans don't come together, that we may face, that we may suffer the consequences of our actions through climate change or through something else, maybe, because, and the reason I say this is because Apple is the only fucking company that doesn't use Type C's. That and also that they made their own shit. They're also one of the biggest contributors to e-waste. Yeah, you know that's true. I yeah. mean, I, 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 I'm, all, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to get into that discussion. I'm no, a, no, no, I, yeah, no. I'm a but hopeful man. Like, I'm just saying well, the MacBook well, burning yeah, is like well, the one <laughs> fucking computer where it's just like it doesn't participate well, in the universal like charging well, source. Yeah. <laughs> And what we're all saying, too, is, like, at least, you know, for me, like, Apple is just one of those companies that, like, clearly, like, they have some shit coming to them. Like, you know, what goes around comes around. And they had that whole shit with the EU, with the USB Type-C, and basically, the EU basically putting their foot down and saying, like, you're basically not allowed to sell your phones here unless you throw in USB Type-C charging ports in your phones. And it's one of those times where I always, like... I always don't like too much when the government interferes when it like, comes to a lot of shit like that. But it is one of those times, though, where I was just kind of like, huh, you know what? Like, this is one of those times where, like, them intervening was actually a fucking good thing. Because their whole argument was what? Like, oh, it's going to interfere with our creative process or something. Like, oh, fuck, gonna, fuck up your like, creative I know, process. I know, I know, yeah. It's, like, it's going to hurt our creativity when it comes to making our phones and whatever. But it's like, bro, like... I really hate to say it, but like iPhones and Samsungs and even just whatever phone you use nowadays, they're really not that far from each other. They're really not. As far as even cameras go and even whatever the fuck shit that they use inside of it, like half of the stuff inside of it's all made by Samsung anyways. Both iPhones and also Samsung phones. Mm -hmm. Like the chips that they use, the hardware that they use, like everything that they have inside is all from fucking Samsung for the most part. And they just basically take all those raw materials and then they go and make them in the Chinese sweatshops in China. And then after that, it's like they ship it out to the rest of the world. And like that's how it usually goes. And Android all the way. Either or for me. I mean, I had an iPhone before. And then I, I switched, obviously, um, back to Samsung uh, after that. But like I think for me, it was just like the... There's really nothing... There's really a lot less you can do. I mean, uh, you could like... Remember back when jailbreaking a phone was, like, such a big thing? And, like, every now and then you'd have that one kid in class that's, like, you know, like, shows off his jailbroken iPhone and, like, all the apps and games he got, like, free, obviously. And I, I remember being, like, not all too impressed just because, I mean, for the most part, like, you know, whenever I had my phone, I, even when smartphones were starting to become a thing, like, I didn't play games a lot. Dude, I... I <sighs> I used it for three things, which was call, text, and porn. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, that's that's what I use my like, phone that's... now, dude. I, it's so <laughs> dumb. Like my cousin is kind of into that kind of stuff. Like, and he's aware of how silly sometimes it can be. It's like he showed me like he he has Mario sixty four fully on his phone, mm -hmm. like fully on his iPhone, and it's like motherfucker like the screen is like completely blocked <laughs> because of like all the buttons and shit it's like yeah. there's like a visualization of the stick and the a button and the yeah, b yeah. button mm -hmm. and the camera buttons and the z button and the r button and stuff and it's like it, it takes up the whole fucking screen not to mention the fact that that shit's like impossible to control on top of everything else it's like dude like it's dumb. It's like, yeah. oh, but look, I jailbroke this shit, and now I have all these games like for for free and like, motherfucker. Have you ever heard of a Have you ever heard of a PC? <laughs> no, because you have an iPhone, you dumb shit, and you're still buying them just so you can feel restricted and not have a charger when you're stranded at the fucking port authority when you need that shit the most. I don't know, man. It's just I don't like the I don't like. No, the I don't like it either. Because I th I also think, too, like, the whole appeal of jailbreaking phones back in the day was just that, like, oh, look at all this free shit you can get. Like, you don't have to pay for it on the App Store. But I think if there's one um, fucking phone that could do emulation not that bad, just because, like, if you do have emulation on it, it would basically be, like, a 3DS, is the new uh, Samsung Z Flip. Which was, like, the it's the Z Flip phone, but, like, just the fucking huge-ass version. We've which, really come full circle, haven't we? I, I know. Like, because it's, like... Remember back in the day when, like, sidekicks and shit were, like, so hype? Everyone, like... Sidekicks cause, were the phone. I'm sure that, I'm sure that, most of you listening right now don't even know what the fuck yeah. that thing is. That was yeah. the cell phone I, back I in the saw, day. The thing is, though, I always saw, like... We didn't call them thotties before, but, like, thotties back in the day, I always saw, like, have sidekicks. And I always just thought, like, I guess, like, in my brain, I was just thinking, I guess I guess sidekicks are just associated with girls. And because it's like, I have never saw a dude have those. But I thought they were fucking sick when I saw them. Everyone thought and they were sick. I know, but, like, I at least in my school, I don't know if it was the same for you, David. But, like, in my school, like, every time I saw a sidekick was in the hands of a girl. Like, I never saw a dude in my entire school ever have a sidekick. The most we'd have was like, I mean, blackberries were also starting like become a real big thing like uh, around then. But when it came to like, for the most part, like, you know, like uh, Motorola razors. Remember those? Those and yep. also I was, I was um, going to bring up razors. Yeah, there, there was a new razor. They made it a while back that was both a touchscreen yeah. and a flip phone. They they made that and I I thought that looked pretty good though. Like it, as far I, as phones I thought go. it looked pretty cool too. I'm not yeah. gonna lie to you. Like mm. it's just you know unga bunga. Interesting how we came full circle. You know like, <laughs> you know friends. <laughs> ah <-ta. laughs> it, It's just interesting how that shit has sort of come around. But yeah, yeah, sidekicks were the phone back then. So were razors, and now iPhones and Androids and stuff have essentially taken over and revolutionized the world. And yeah. Just uh, segueing off of jailbreaking a little bit, mm -hmm. you, um, unless you had any more thoughts. I mean... Oh, no. Uh, it was just that, like, I, I also just feel like, at least when it came to emulation, like, the only place that you can really do it and I, I guess kind of have, like... Because, I mean, emulation is not exactly the full experience. Like, the best experience you could ever have playing a lot of the games you emulate, let, let's say them being, like, GBA games or even... uh nintendo 64 especially that was the ones that like i got a lot of roms for because i by that time uh when i was downloading them i didn't have fucking uh an n64 like and i wait 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 roms yeah <laughs> yeah 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 you have, you have you have mentioned rom hacks in the presence of a nintendo employee <laughs> Prepare to be sued for your negligence and proceed Pre to be annihilated. Prepare to be sodomized in your asshole. <laughs> I just become like one of those like Emmy robots from the new Metroid. Oh, I have dude, dude, don't, dude, don't, don't say dude. nothing about it. I didn't. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't play it yet. I want to get dread. I didn't I, play I, it. I was never the biggest Metroid guy. I always got. I was trash, and the game is that game's hard in a good kind mm. of way, though. Not in yeah. the way that like those reviewers go about, like, ah, uh, kids are soft locked. I wish that games were so hard now. It's like, can we, there's multiple things I want to talk about real quick when it comes to go Metroid go. Dread. One of them is that Kotaku article that literally like. Like, they're they're fishing so hard to the- they're, like, trying to fish and appeal so hard to the fucking Smash community now by essentially suggesting you pirate Met you pirate Metroid Dread. It, that, sh that shit was so cringy. Kotaku as a whole is so fucking cringe. And, um, it's the true. other one was, um, 
the game reviewers. That people, like, there was one review that came out, you know, where someone was, like, really heavily criticizing the game for being too hard. The same thing that happened with the Crash Bandicoot, the new Crash Bandicoot game. Uh, how they said, like, oh, like, it's the fucking whatchamadoodle, it's the Dark Souls of Crash game. Those are the Dark Souls of that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and yeah, it seems okay. to be a common trend where a lot of game reviewers say that games are too hard, and... Uh, the first instinct that people have when they think of something like that is they, they think, wow, this guy's trash. <laughs> this guy fucking, like, literally, this guy sucks at games. Literally, you should not be, you should not literally be as bad at video games as you are and also be considered a professional game journalist. And I, yeah, could, uh, not ag uh, I could not agree more. I a reviewer, no less. Yeah, if you don't like, know what literally. the fuck you're talking yeah. about with movies and shit, like, you, I don't know if you should be allowed to be a professional movie critique if you don't really understand the art form. And there's a lot of, and gaming is, for whatever reason, still on its way, despite being more mainstream. And honestly, if I'm not wrong, a, a higher profiting industry than movies now, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I might be so. I might be wrong mm. about that. I, I don't know. I don't remember where I got that source from, but whatever. We don't care about facts on this show. And, um, <laughs> I it, could believe it though. But it's up it, there. And um yeah. But at the same time, you got to remember. It's sort of like the all cops are bad argument. Like, mm -hmm. you know, people say like, "Oh, like cops will be like, oh, one bad apple doesn't ruin this thing." And they'll use that as their argument as to why we don't need police reform or why, mm -hmm. you know, you try to let a racist cop get away with some shit. But yeah. another thing you got to remember is that like when it comes to that, it's like we are also asking too much of cops to the point where you call a cop for every little thing that frankly you shouldn't really call a guy with a fucking gun for and all he knows how mm -hmm. to do is shoot it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the same with game journalism, believe mm -hmm. it or not. And that's part of why game journalism is as much of a joke as it is. Because not only do a lot of people, not all of them suck at games and then review them, and, mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong, Metroid is notoriously hard, but it's, it's, it's yeah. there's a learning curve to it. You gotta remember, they also don't really get that much time to get that learning curve. No, yeah, I was gonna... bosses yeah. and shit want them to mm -hmm. just get this review out, get this review out. I, it's gonna get I, I so many clicks that. right yeah. before the game gets out. And meanwhile, yeah, yeah. the guy probably only played it for like two hours. Maybe even less than that. Yeah, and like, you, you uh, can't... Movies, you watch it for two hours, you get the whole impression because you watch the whole thing. Video mm -hmm. games are a lot more expensive because there's a lot more content in them. It's a much more yeah. like long-winded and sit-down-worthy experience mm -hmm. rather than just simply watching a movie for two to three hours. Exactly, games yeah. take more mm -hmm. time, and yet, no, we need to get this review out ASAP. So unless the reviewer gets a review copy, which not all of them do... They're not going to really be able to provide an accurate source of information for the game or a true accurate review. And that's another mm -hmm. reason why I think that, like, t fucking gaming journalism is such a fucking joke. Yeah, I, I, it really uh, is, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can agree with that. I think it's also, um, there's a lot of, like, the deck is almost stacked against a lot of these guys, um, like the reviewers in particular. Yeah. Just because, like, as you said, like, you know, a game is, like, uh, it could depend, but like most games on average are definitely like at least half a day affairs. Like if you really want to like really get into like let's say the meat, uh, of a game, you're gonna have to at least dedicate. If it's gonna be for the day, you're gonna have to at least dedicate like at least a good maybe eight to ten hours. May depends on the game again, but it's like you know open world as games like let's say, um, one that's turned around recently definitely No Man's Sky, mm -hmm. a few others. Um, that we obviously know of, like The Witcher, and if, and I mean Cyberpunk, like we we know that game is fucking trash, oh, and yeah. it'll always be trash, and I will always fucking go out of my way to say that this game is literally a testament of what you don't do Shit was during development. Such a dumpster fire. <laughs> I, it was, it really was. Came out and at like, a time where nobody can get these graphics cards either, but uh, whatever. It's not even worth. Uh, <laughs> it's not even worth getting into that conversation. It's not. Yeah, and at least when it comes to like uh video game journalism and like um the. Like, the trend is that, yeah, like, we're going to give you, let's say, this game. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's say, like, even a new Dark Souls, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, though, too. Like, Dark Souls has also, like, um, essentially, uh, historically speaking now, like, has become, like, this, like, almost gold standard in a way. Where it's the gold standard of difficulty, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and it's, like, everyone who says if a game is hard, they always just compare it to Dark Souls. Or, like, if... I mean, there's even a lot of, like, um, Dark Souls-inspired games out there. Like, Sekiro and a few others that, like, obviously, I know, I'm know i sure a lot of people know. And uh, literally, like, the one appeal about Dark Souls is that, like, obviously, yes, it is ob obscenely difficult. I've played the game. I've never finished it. I've played three. I am still stuck on this one fucking boss. 
And I, I literally, there was times when I was like, oh, I'll, I feel like, you know, like, I feel uh, enthusiastic today. Let's go fucking play some Dark Souls. And then literally after I lose for the 15th, thousandth motherfucking time, I'm just like, <laughs> fuck it. Like they, and it's like, here's the thing though, too. When I walk away from that, uh, when I walk away from Dark Souls, like that's not me saying, "Oh, like fuck this game, like this game sucks." Like that. I never, I have never said that in my entire life. Whenever I played Dark Souls, and the reason being is because Dark Souls, yeah, it has a very steep learning curve, and there's a lot of things obviously that you gotta know: timing, counters, when, like, especially uh, memorizing like uh, bosses' move sets and like, well, not move sets, but at least like you know memorizing a boss's attack so that you know when to dodge and here and there and when to attack. It's all stuff that you gotta learn, uh, and it's stuff that obviously um, Dark Souls doesn't hold your hand ever. Like Dark Souls never basically gives you tutorials. The very first part of the damn game is just you being dropped and being said, "All right, yeah, go, go, ahead. go crazy, go nuts." Here's a club <laughs> for you to bash people's head in, and like just go, you know, go crazy with. And and I I I started with the third game because uh, I remember when it first came out, like everyone was kind of going nuts about it. So I was like, "All right, let me check this out." Because like I always heard about Dark Souls, but I never really like fully played it. And playing it like i can see why that like you know people may i, I feel as if people's criticisms about make saying dark souls is too hard is kind of bullshit because like that's like it, a lot of times people kind of forget that yes a game is a game but godfather's then, trash too many italians <laughs> mafia one <laughs> definitive edition is trash too many italians yeah like and, you, you know what you're getting into with no, fucking no, dark souls man yeah, you should i know I know. That's why I'm saying, though, like, people seem to forget, though, like, you know, yeah, you can say a game is a game, but you can't, you cannot forget what this game in particular is. And for Dark Souls specifically, it's clearly a game that it is up to you how you want to play. And not to mention even, like, if we're going outside of Dark Souls, another game that I at least I think I heard was brought up um, that kind of was compared to it was Breath of the Wild. And Breath of the Wild also, like, I know people say that it's a bit more difficult than a usual Zelda game. Personally, for me, though, I always thought that, like, this game, if you're at least aware of what you're doing and aware of the mechanics of the game, you can really break this game. And I've seen people break this game, like, hilariously. Like, I remember (laughs) when, like... When this game first came out, like, people were literally just skipping all, like, the uh, temples and just going to Ganon. And I mean, like, the thing is, too, the game actually made that avenue open, too. Because it's like, if you just don't want to go and fight the beasts and you want to go straight to Ganon, all right, fine, you could do that. You Probably the chances of you, like, if you're not, uh, if you don't know how to exploit the game... If you don't know, if you don't have that knowledge, then you're basically fucked. But it's like it's still kind of fun just going there, even though you only have three hearts and nothing but your fucking boxers <laughs> going to fight Ganon and mm-hmm. the King of Evil. So I mean, the freedom is also there too. But um, Dark Souls also like I mean, I've seen people like cra- do some crazy character builds as well in that game, and it's like uh, some people literally just like the whole game would just carry around a gigantic hammer. And they beat the game with that gigantic hammer. <laughs> and some people even just use yeah, like just only get your badge points too. all the way up. Yeah. Pretty and, much the same thing. And uh Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's just uh I also think too, like, um th- nowadays, cause like ever since the advent of mobile games, mobile games for the most part are so unga boonga like, you know, type of games that like literally like you could just turn your brain off half the time and like just, you know, play Candy Crush or whatever. Yeah. And I think the trend is nowadays is that, like, a lot of people... And this, this also happened with Pokemon. People really, like, at least some companies, and I think even, like, uh, fans in general, started to feel as if, like, oh, like, you know, these games are way too hard. Like, you know, we want to, like, widen the net. And, like, ha- like, have a more, like, obviously casual fucking, like, audience, like, come in. Like, we want more of the casuals. Because, like, again, we even said this about Nintendo. Like, that's who they're always going to appeal to. Especially with, like, you know, Super Smash Brothers. They don't give a fuck about the competitive scene. They want more of these, like, casual players coming in. Because that's where the money is. And it's the same also for when Pokemon, like, started to really get dumbed down. Because, like, I was playing those games for a while. And I realized, like, wow, this is, like, piss easy. Like, I could literally close my uh, eyes. I was going to ask game. you. I was yeah. going to ask you. Uh, Pokemon, um, uh, the Blazing Diamond and 420 Pearl. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, I believe just today announced that it's also just like I think the last one, it's going to have EXP share. Uh, which I know a lot of you are not happy yeah. about. And some yeah. of the, and again, but the casuals don't care. But and it, here's, here's the thing, though, too. Like, you could turn it off if you so choose. I, I'm at least glad that at least they did. Can you the explain choice. to the people what EXP share is? EXP share is essentially a uh, a item that they placed into the game. Oh, they already had it a while ago, but the, the its first iteration was that you basically give it to another Pokemon, and uh, if let's say you if this is the second one, let's say this is the second Pokemon. Your first Pokemon is in battle. He beats a guy. The EXP that he gets, a good chunk of it also goes to that one Pokemon that's holding EXP share. But later on, throughout the other games, they also started to realize that, like, you know, um, because grinding was such a big thing, especially during the first couple generations, until they decided that, like, oh, EXP share is not just going to be for one Pokemon, but for every Pokemon. So your entire party is going to get the, essentially, um, scaling-wise, they're going to get the same level that everyone else has. So if you had that one, like, fuck you Pidgey that you had at level 2 for like the entire game like thing you that'll be a Pidgeotto by like towards the 4th gym like that's how it's just like kind of is um nowadays and they realized that at least um I, I mean at least when they first introduced it I don't know which game it was but I think after they first introduced it I don't think uh, it just seems as if like no one really criticized it too much to the point where like Game Freak just thought, hey, fuck it, let's just add it in all the Some games. Some people just... did, but more people were a lot more upset about the lack of Pokemon compared to the other games and the graphics and yeah, yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. And people were just... Animations uh, as well, that was The animations, yeah. people were just generally upset that it seemed like such a, frankly, fucking lazy project. Yeah, and Sword it, and Shield it, got, it, that, got yeah, black for it. Yeah. It was, and it's, isn't it like the best-selling fucking game, which is super depressing? I feel for Pokemon fans nowadays, yeah. because like it's just like... At least in the core series, like, they're doing other stuff, like, that RP, uh, that RPG or Zelda-like game, that still looks incredible. Yeah, but RCs, like, yeah. It seems <laughs> like they put so much effort into that other stuff, and the base fucking games, it's like, they, I, I just don't think they know what to fucking do anymore. I, 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 I mean, mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, I know their process, I know what their process yeah, yeah, yeah. is, mm -hmm. they take their face, they fucking smack it as hard as they can against their keyboard. <laughs> And just add vowels in between the letters that are that wound up hitting their face. And that is how they come up with new Pokemon and new Pokemon names. Because I don't know how the fuck else they come up with these things. I swear to God, there's just going to be like a Marlboro. Uh, it's going to be like a cigarette. <laughs> just straight I mean, up. It's like Marlboro the cigarette. He's going to be a fucking fire type. And that's... There you go. And that, now... That, uh, with, uh, even the music. I don't know if you heard about this as well. I heard this. And they're claiming that they're doing this to try to give it that classic, authentic 2006 feel. For uh, the new Diamond and Pearl? <clears throat> yes. Uh-huh. The music is not even, like... They're not even updated versions or, like, modern versions of the original tracks. They're just kind of, like, chip toony again. And they sound, like... Mail bad. Files? <laughs> they sound really bad. It's as if they somehow Whoa. made them kind of worse. Like, let me play this for you real quick. Hold on. Hey, let me let me find this real quick because he um he This is from the game's official soundtrack? Yeah, I think it was from like some like sort of like video that they were um some sort of video that they were talking about with it because I had a friend that did this. Here, listen to um I'm going to raise the volume on this and tell me if you can hear this well. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. Retaining the look and feel of the original DS games all the way down to the MIDI like soundtrack. <laughs> 2006. Oh. It sounds... I don't know how that came across on the recording, but it just... It sounds a little meshed. It, 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 sound, it, it sounds like the mixing isn't completely there. Maybe it's just a beta or a work in progress, but just uh, from how the last couple Pokemon games have been, they just seem like... Kind of just fucking lazy. And I so, get it. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's too many Pokemon to just give an updated model to for every single one now, I kind of understand that. But at the same time, I mean, didn't they prove that, like, the fucking models in, whatchamacallit, in, uh, in Sword, Sword and Shield, Shield were, like, completely mm. reused ones? Yeah. From, like, some of the uh, past games, especially. Like, uh, I believe the last game that they ended it with um, X and Y was Sun and Moon. And then Sun and Moon 2. Because they like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, 
I mean, but it was kind of a trend, especially with the last uh, Pokemon game for the DS, which was uh, Black and White Two. Yeah. So I mean, it was it was also like going to be the last Pokemon game for that entire console's like life cycle. Yeah. So I mean, that's the reason why that I I guess like they usually did it, but um, I I, I mean I'm still gonna be playing um Diamond and Pearl because like, I haven't I, I actually have like a special place in my heart for that game. No, so, for like, sure. I'm, yeah, I'm still gonna be getting it, but I can't help but at least um. Uh, at least admit that uh, when it comes to where Game Freak's kind of going, they're clearly more... Uh, I mean, to be fair, like, playing Pokemon competitively is kind of like... I'm not saying it's dumb, because it's like, I'm not going to be knocking any competitive <laughs> scene, but it's like, you know, the ones who really do take Pardo, it seriously... Pardo, Pardo, Pardo. Yeah, like, these guys are literally, like, hatching eggs, like, every fucking day. They're, like, getting all the EVs and the IVs all up in their fucking Pokemon, making them literally, like, the most The EVs, up. the IVs, their RVs. Yeah, like, they're just, like, fucking jacking these Pokemon up to be, like, the best uh, form that they could possibly be, and... Literally, when they bring him to, like, uh, it's so weird. Like, it's, like, because I never thought in my life that I would ever see a DS, let's say, Pokemon battle on a fucking Jumbotron on a massive stage. Like, it just blew my mind that I was like, holy shit. Like, and... and and even uh, Pokemon even has a TCG as well, like which I think still people play like to this day. And like it's not obviously as popular as like Magic or Yu Gi Oh, but like there's still people fucking playing it like enough that even during like you know the whole like Logan Paul shit, like you know how they were jacking up the prices for a lot of like old uh, Pokemon cards. Um, they people have starting to get into collecting a lot. I mean PewDiePie's been uh, collecting uh, Yu Gi Oh cards and he's doing live streams of like pack openings and stuff. So I mean, I don't know. but um, it's uh. It's just so weird, though, like, because going back to Pokemon's competitive scene, it's, like, it's just so... I I have a feeling it's fairly niche compared to, let's say, a lot of other games' competitive scenes, just because Pokemon, for the most part, like, I mean, I guess you could even argue we always had a bit of a competitive scene, uh, especially with Gen 1, because when link cables were a thing, like, oh, we could, like, I could literally fight my team against your team on the school playground. And I love people... how Pokemon was designed to be played competitively and Smash wasn't. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's so I, funny. I know, especially like um, the first game, uh, like obviously Gen 1 and a few others after that, like um, everyone kind of had like, th- there was always a bit of a meta when it came to like what teams if you want, like if you want to be competitively like the best trainer there ever was or whatever the fuck like you gotta literally get these pokemon and nothing else everything else is garbage like it was so funny too because like there was literally a website that literally had um for every generation of the game had like tier lists for uh pokemon and like saying like how like if these guys are s tier and shit like that and like how you gotta like basically throw in your evs and ivs to these guys to buff them up and everything and it Pokemon literally like again. I uh, I haven't pl- t- like touched the game in a while. Oh God, the XP share is literally like fucking trending on Twitter right now. Uh, after like, the, it's was the, the news was the news today? Yeah. Oh fuck, I missed it then. Shit. Oh okay, I gotta check that out. But it's um yeah, EXP share definitely um simplified the game to the point where like honestly, I think a knuckle dragging monkey could play this game and probably <laughs> get like a level one hundred team like no problem. <laughs> And I'm not saying that, like, the game is, like, not... Um, the mechanics of the game and battle the battle mechanics-wise and everything is not intricate. But it's, like... I mean, but also, again, Pokemon was not never meant to be, like, a... Like, there was no learning curve when learning the game. It's, like, at least for me, like, when I was playing, like, from way back when in Gen 1, like, I didn't... Like, there was moves that basically uh, affected your uh, opponent's stats or your stats... Like boosting your attack or boosting your defense, and then you you end your turn, and then the guy would either attack you or boost his own stats. And I didn't realize how actually great stat boosting moves were because like I just always remember playing Earth, like just using Earthquake, Hyper Beam, and two other fucking moves all the goddamn time. And I remember there was even one time when I just gave my entire team Hyper Beam. I even gave what the fuck was it? Uh, was it Gloom? Gloom. I think you could give you could give Gloom fucking hyper beam. The shit was nuts. Like then you literally just could do anything you wanted in the game. And I think it's like the freedom that you had as well. Like you could because you could make your team however you want. I even think too like um just like shotgunning a lot right now. But it's like 
Game Freak also, I think, kind of dug themselves in a hole when it comes to like when it came to I think um, their franchise because the only like l- like logical step for them forward is always just let's say new region and new Pokemon. And it's like, I don't know what fucking number they're at right now. Which again, it's like, like how do they not do that without just motorboating their keyboards and just putting something in? That, like, how do you that's do what the I mean. same thing mm. over and over and over? And I think they're starting to realize that, you know? Because, like, I, the thing is, too, like, if I, um, because, like, every new region and every new generation, they always needed at least, like, because it's, like, a new place we're going to. So, like, hey, we're going to need at least new Pokemon. And I think it kind of varied within re- region to region. Again, I'm no expert. It's just like stuff that like at least been I've been observing, and I've been a fan for a while too. So I, at least I think I have some credence to say it. But it's like I think remember uh, like usually it's like either fifty to a hundred new ones that they're gonna add in, and for every generation, every new region. And I honestly feel like if they decided, hey, like we're gonna make a new headlining game, but we're not gonna add any more new Pokemon, I would be perfectly fine with that, because. The fact of the matter is, this game's balance is so fucked. Like, like if we're talking, let's say, like, competitively, quote-unquote, this game's balance is fucked. Like, from head to toe, it's just fucked. Mm. There's just so many fucking Pokemon that you have to keep track of. And not to mention, like again, like, there is a meta that everyone follows within at least the new current game, which is Sword and Shield. Uh, everyone, for the most part, has, like, the... Not exactly the same teams... But for the most part, it's like you're going to be saying fairly the same amount of Pokemon, let's say, each match. Let's say if you're playing competitively. And it comes to a certain point, though, too, that like, dude, like how much is enough? Really? Like if I was, let's say, like game. Until the money game, stops coming in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like game. If I was part of Game Freak's like board of, uh, not board of directors, but like if I was a part of it, like I would just be wondering in my head, like, you know, like how much more can we like have this train go before it just collapses because fact of the matter is like like pokemon for the most part like had a lot of games that weren't even part of the headlining series that did very well one of them being coliseum which was basically like a uh this was the first pokemon game that i think came out for the gamecube and it was like a fucking classic for a lot of people i still love coliseum to this day and i honestly wish they could have done something of further with that whole like let's say ip because or i guess not ip but i guess within that sort of series because it's like sort of a series kind of contained within itself in the in the pokemon world and um it had its own story had its own sort of like kind of mechanics and even kind of history believe it or not and it's like i don't think for me like uh for for pokemon at least like their headlining games like the uh the sun and moons and the diamond and pearls and all them like i think maybe game freak started to realize that like their side games were like are do a lot better reception wise than their headlining games nowadays because the at least arceus uh game that's coming out within january that is something that they've never done before yeah and and it's breaking the mold essentially for them at least like because pokemon follows the traditional formula and they've followed it for so many years now that like any time that they try to do something new people eat that shit up so fucking fast and for me it's like i'm definitely getting that game and i think at least like from head to toe i think it, the game just looks very beautiful currently at least and i, I wish they maybe could have like a beta test or something or, or, you or beta just see where the budget went yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's going on here, my dude. Yeah. Into the protagonist's ass now. <laughs> yeah, <But> man. <laughs> and, you know, as far as that goes, back to the original mm, discussion yeah. of, like, Kotaku trying to be edgy and, like, you know, like, being like, oh, Pirate, uh-huh. pirate mm. Metroid Dread. It's like, pirate the fuck out of games that Nintendo doesn't sell anymore. Mm. I'm, I should probably watch what I say here, actually. <laughs> now, now, that, now that you mentioned that, hmm. <laughs> I, I, maybe I'm at like a crossroads. I can't stop people from doing what they're gonna do. I will. Cri- yeah. I will criticize Nintendo's practice of, you know, just not really re-releasing enough of their old games. I'm not gonna sit here and say that fucking pirate, like, or emulation. I should say, not mm-hmm. piracy, is not fucking crucial 
for mm. the preservation of some games, and I think Nintendo's oh, fuck yeah. I think Nintendo's philosophy on that is very ass backwards. I think that's a safer way to put it. Like I'm not encouraging people to steal shit. I, I'm not gonna yeah, encourage yeah. people to do that or or all those people who say like piracy doesn't affect sales, blah blah blah, this and but that. But it's, it's like, like what other avenue that they have? Stole a copy, but like dude, if you pirate Metroid Dread <laughs> Fuck, fuck you. I know, yeah. I know. Honest to God, fuck you, P dude. Like, people have been waiting for, like, a new Metroid game forever, and if you, like, if you just, like, play it for free, and you, like, take away from the sales, or, like, the sales numbers are inaccurate, uh, that's gonna, uh, in theory, that will make Nintendo think the game mm -hmm. is not doing as well, and they're not gonna make another 2D Metroid. But again, we're yeah. talking in theory here. The game, I believe, was already, like, sold out on, like, fucking Amazon, which is insane in and, of, in and of itself. Like, mm -hmm. it's already, like, gonna do well. So it's at the point where now I feel like piracy isn't gonna affect it. And there are some people who say that just, like, oh, well, it doesn't affect it in the sense because the sales numbers are so high regardless, or Nintendo does take mm -hmm. into account the amount that the amount that gets pirated, which I don't understand how they would, but I'm assuming the number one company in Japan would have, like, some sort of, like, secret shadow way of doing so, but, like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, salty, like, smash people who, like, hate Nintendo and want to, like, never buy their shit or pirate all of it. I, I just I just think the whole, like, free smash thing is just fucking pathetic at this point. And I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've said that before. Like, I, I support the cause. I, su I support, like, the cause of P Plus and everything like that. I hate how they cancel these tournaments for some bullshit reason that emulation is illegal, which, by the way, it's not. It's, um... <laughs> I, but at the same time, I'm just like, they've made their stance on this abundantly fucking clear, and they're a giant company, you can't do shit. Like, it's just like, when people like say like, oh, let's uh, stream Nick All-Stars today and not watch the new Smash Direct, let nobody download the new character, even though we already paid for the Fighter's Pass, it's gonna download yeah. automatically, you fucking dumbass. Like, we all, like these, all <laughs> these people already paid for it. It's like, dude... <sighs> It's like, just, get the fuck over yourself, It's just really. so like, fruitless yeah. at this point. Like, dude, I, I I don't know. Like, I even have a friend who constantly tweets it, and whenever, he, whenever I see that shit, I just, I cringe. And I'm sure people <laughs> cringe at, like, my tweets and stuff or whatever, but you know what? I don't care. I'm speaking from the heart. And honestly, the game looks incredible. I suck at Metroid oh, games, yeah. so I'm probably not going to get it. Or maybe I'll, I'll play Super, maybe I'll play Super I'm Metroid first or something like that. There's so many fucking games that I gotta get. Yeah, I know. I want to get the uh, new dude, monkey. Like, I want to get the Monkey Ball remake. I'm getting the new oh. Mario Party. I kind of want to get. Rip I want to. My wallet. Kind of want to get oh. Metroid Dread. What's the other one? I kind of want to get uh, Nick All Stars for Switch, just so I can take it to tournaments if there wind up being tournaments for the game. Mm -hmm. Which sucks because I don't want to have to waste money on the Switch version. But whatever it is, what it is, and. Mm -hmm. uh, what else, man? Honestly, I think I'm pretty sure there were a couple other ones that I honestly did want to get as well. It's just there's just too fucking th there's too much. Good, there's too much. There there's really too much. Is too much good shit coming yeah. out right now. But if there's one there's thing, holidays. if there's one thing that um, I, it's not gonna cost as much money to get. Actually, it will probably cost even more. <laughs> now, now that I mention it, uh, if you want to take a look at your Discord DMs. Take a look. Oh! Take a look at what I bought a couple weeks ago. David is gonna be gambling, folks. I'll put this shit on screen right now, my friend. Uh, it, th that, the set that, looks really good, though. It, it looks really nice. It is really nice. That thing on the far left, though, was probably the, one of the dumbest. I'll give. I, I'll tell a couple of stories before we close out here. I guess one of them. I'll end on a funny note. Something I probably should have opened the episode on, if we're being honest. But <laughs> you, we we go with the flow on this show. You know we how do, it is. We do. We do. And on the left, um, that is an automatic car. I'll put it on screen right now. On the left, uh, I'm looking at this. <laughs> to, for those of you listening on Spotify, this is a. Um, 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 literally, as the box says, automatic card. Shuffle. Yeah, this is a, this a bunch of poker. <laughs> this is a bunch of card and poker equipment. I got a, I got a new chipset, and uh, that's actually, if you want to take a look at the video below this, that is, um, that is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's Metalux foilback crimson cards. So they're really, Ooh. they're really shiny, actually. If you look at the shimmer on that Ooh. shit. I'm not gonna lie, I saw them, I really liked them, because I've been thinking about getting into poker, I want to set up a poker night mm. with the boys, I mean, I'm, I, mm. I'm learning how to play and stuff, and, um, these cards just looked really cool, I kind of want to collect, like, playing cards, if I'm being honest, like, not like, mm. you know, fighting game trading, uh, fighting game, uh, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, trading card game yeah. shit, like, like, this kind of stuff, because I don't know why, I just, I'm, I'm always fascinated in those, like, old-timey games and stuff, like, poker oh, yeah. games... I, I kind of get it now. I used to, like, shit on ESPN for airing it as a sport. But then when you see how much money those fucking people are playing for, it's like, it actually becomes a lot more entertaining. 
Yeah, it, it, it really does. Because the stakes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And we're not going to be doing no big gambling, nothing like that. I mean, I, I kind of want to start getting into poker for the social aspect of it all. And But at the left there, that isn't that was probably the dumbest impulse buy. I'll get into this. That is an, <laughs> automat- that is an automatic card shuffler. <laughs> And let me, let me explain. All right, the reason I got into that, uh, the reason I bought that is because, like, and I stared at it for so long in the fucking Walgreens when I was thinking of, like, <laughs> buying that shit. Because uh, I'm like, why why would a Walgreens have this? It's too convenient. And um, I it was just... It is a convenience store. <laughs> I suck at shuffling cards. I got shaky you, hands. You don't know how to do a shotgun shuffle? No. Did you ever try? <laughs> no. It's pretty fucking easy, David. Can you... All right, show me. Next... Show me next time I see you or whatever, so... Don't bring those cards, though. Those look way too nice even for me to touch. No, <laughs> no, come on. I'm, I want to use those cards. They're, they're not... They were not No, 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 no. I'm not saying don't use them, but it's like, you know, like... I don't know, bro. Well, what's like, going to those... happen? Are you going to, like, put your fucking weed out on, like, my, on, like, my cards and shit? Like... Yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lick it and just claim this card as mine. No, I want to use these. That's what got them to be used. They're they're pretty. The, the, to be fair, though, a lot of the other... And they weren't decks... expensive. They're just, like, they have, like, no, a little no, no, shimmer I... on them. It's not I, like I, they're, I, like, I, collector's I, cards that I went into the fucking backwards for, drove to, mm. like, Minnesota to go to, like, the fucking <laughs> international, like, or, like bicycle, <laughs> like, tra- playing <laughs> card game convention <laughs> and looked at, like, the fucking playing cards that they had on display there for like thirty thousand dollars and be like i want that like no imagining like on ebay like to someone's probably got like a w uh wpc like world poker championship like straight up like cards that they use like during the league and everything and i'm just like i can imagine like unless that they're used like unless they made of something different i'm pretty sure most playing cards are all made the same like they were all made the same after a certain year yeah but but like you know it's like it's like, oh, these are the ones that the pros used and shit. It's like, dude, the it's players like, didn't touch the fucking card. Well, it's, it's part of the brand. The bo- I know, but it's like, you know, it's still in the fucking box. <laughs> There's a Duncan uh, yo-yo stand at the American Dream Mall. And those are, like, literally the original yo-yos. Those are the ones that all the professional, like, yo-yo, like, players use. Which, by the way, yes, that is a real thing, apparently. They're, they're like, mm. professional yo-yo competitions. And that's, that's, there's a kiosk because those are the original yo-yos. Those have been around for, like, 90-plus years. So there is like sort of a brand recognition thing that people will like with these things. Like these are bi- yeah, yeah. these are bicycle trading uh, playing cards, which I believe like own that industry at this point. Yeah, there's like nobody else that I've ever seen like actually make playing a cards. A little bit like, monopolized. And there are some other ones yeah. I wanted to get too. Like I want to collect them. There were some Aurora colored ones. They were like, they had like this gold tint on them that I really want to get as well. Like those looked Ooh. really cool. Honestly, no, De- Dennis, I bought these at a Walgreens. We're going to use these fucking cards, okay? All right, all right, all right. I got the special, get- I got the super special like shiny oh. cards. I want to use them. Don't get your titties in a twist. All please. right. Well, speaking of getting titties in a yeah. twist, I guess I'll end on this story. Uh, you remember mm-hmm. the uh, you remember the porn star that I wanted to get on the podcast? Uh, Cody something. Yes. What do you? What was it? Uh, Vor, what was her last Vor. name? Vor. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like named off, about named it? off the fetish. I mean, um, it was. <laughs> uh huh. She like did like a public invite on like her Twitter. Uh huh. To her Discord. Uh huh. She has a Discord apparently. So, I was thinking about it and I joined it. And I thought maybe this would be a good way to maybe network a little bit, and get my dick off a little bit, <laughs> and stuff. And because like obviously there's porn in this Discord, I'm I'm actually literally looking at it right now because I like I was clicking I clicked on it, but then I didn't take I didn't put two and two into account. You know what I mean? Where I should have probably mm-hmm. realized she's doing a public invite of this thing. I'm probably not going to be able to message her directly and ask her for something like yeah. that if she wanted to appear. Yeah. She's a porn star. She probably doesn't have her DMs publicly open. I mean, yeah, I'm I sure. I didn't put two and two account on that, and I just real I went in there, and I'm like, oh, fuck. This is stupid. Now why am I in here? Am I just going to be, like, the best community member of the porn server that I possibly can be? Yeah, be like, you, you go did up the ranks. <laughs> you, you did such a good job jacking off today. <laughs> like wonderful stuff good for you and so I saw some of the porn in there and so I was looking at one video right where she was with these two dudes mm-hmm. and it was there was like build up to it like she like she's a ridiculously busty like porn star like she has like huge natural breasticles and mm-hmm. she gets like her tits like wet in a sink right 
And mm -hmm. apparently the two dudes, they were, like, trying to help her or, like, trying to get rid of her or something. So they sent her outside to, like, dry them off or some shit. And one of the dudes whipped his dick out. And it was one of those, like, flash cut, like, trailers of the porno or whatever. And to <laughs> my surprise, the two dudes just started fucking. <laughs> like, immediately. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, why? Like, no, I didn't need to see that. Oh, That's the devil's oh. threesome. Oh. <laughs> That's what they call, like, three dudes having a threesome. The devil's threesome. <laughs> like, dude, there was, so, there was so many times. Literally, I had like... to know. Literally, my reaction. I'm, I had to get my reaction in there. I just, like, it popped up, and I was like, oh, ew, 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 ew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Like, yeah, the... like, close it real quick. Because <laughs> it was the last thing I was expecting. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is a very, like, popular porn star at this point. I mean, she really worked her way up through browsers and shit. Like, she does a lot of her own content. She's funny as fuck, dude. Like, you're probably... Any, like, really horny people listening to this, you're probably gonna recognize her when I say this. She did a video where she fucked a fan. Oh. But it was... It was a literal fan. <laughs> like, she did, like, a joke where she was just, like... It was, like, a joke video where, like, she's, like, fucking her, like, her number one fan. And it's, like, a giant, like, you know, like... Like, like a literal fucking, like, blowing fan. <laughs> I hate you, David. I thought it was funny. Another no, thing, no, no, another no, thing where she did the thing, like, oh, like, what are you doing, stepladder? And, like, she's holding, like, a stepladder over her and she's, like, pretending to fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> like she's got a sense of humor as well like I got this from her safe for work account I don't follow her not safe for work one cause this woman is into some fucking super duper omega kinky dinky shit like I think she's like one of those advanced pansexuals where like she'll fuck like <laughs> like she'll fuck like anything and so like there were these like glimpses of like her like you know like fucking like trans girls and stuff like that and apparently another one where she was doing a porno with two dudes and the two dudes were fucking each other apparently and I'm like that's some kinky dinky fucking shit right there and I'm not exactly into that but I seen some of this because I joined the discord because I wanted to get this person on the podcast because I thought she would be a really interesting guest because she's done a bunch of comedy podcasts before but then I found out I couldn't DM her and all I got out of it was gay porn <laughs> you know David so that's how I, I, that story I, ended pretty I, much I, 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 I hate to say this, but that's just about your luck when it comes to... So that would be about your luck when it comes to something like that. <laughs> it's just... You know, dude, trust me, if y'all... <sighs> Whatever, man. <laughs> I don't know. When it comes to something like that... I, I'm, not a, I'm not a bad guy. I, I, I take care. I, I know what a real woman looks like. I engage with them regularly. And, and, and fondle them. <laughs> and will... <laughs> I mean that depends on that depends on the woman and how like uh, comfortable they are with me and how interested they are with me and that obviously would you would you fondle me Smithers? <laughs> yeah, if, any, if anything, that's the other way around. That's that's Smithers. <laughs> that's Smithers who's trying to get with Burns. Like I inter, I'm not a fucking incel. I interact with real women. I have a bunch of girlfriends, not like you know, like a dating friends. You know what I mean? Uh, f female friends. Fag. Fag. <laughs> Fag. No. <laughs> like I'm talking myself into the fucking corner at this point. I just think she'd be an interesting guest to have because she's really funny. And I don't know, she sort of worked her own way up through that. And I think having a porn star on the podcast would be like, whoa, they did this. You know what I mean? I feel like, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, like, seriously. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like people would be like, whoa, that's wild. And it's not. Like, she's also just, like, a person who, like, does, probably does stuff outside of porn. And, like, has <laughs> hobbies and stuff. Yeah, it's work. Yeah, yeah it's, it, work. it's also her work. Which, you know, yeah. God bless her that she was able to, you know, like, do what she really loves. I mean, if anything, I envy her for that. That she's able to get to fucking do that for a living. I mean, we all aspire to be our best selves and have the careers that we want. But, I don't know. I take care I take care of my coworkers. You know, like, I mean, like, I've been through a lot of shit in, like, the last, like, two years or so. Especially throughout, like, COVID and whatnot. And I just... I'm trying to love the ones I'm with. They say if you can't be with the one you love to love the ones you're with. Isn't that what they say? Isn't that how that song goes? So if you want to like see like positive change like throughout your friends and whatnot, then try to be the best person you can be to them. And I'm saying that to all the young guys listening to this podcast as well, that if you want to get with a girl and stuff, just treat them like people. Honest to God, because guess what? They're people. You know, the second... The, the, women fucking love it when you listen to them. Believe it or not, they love that shit. So if you listen to them, you just talk with them, you know, sometimes just hear them out on their problems. Just literally treat them like a human being. 
you'll have better luck with that kind of stuff. You'll find that the less you try to get laid, the more likely you are to get laid, believe it or not. <laughs> it's like, the best way to try to do it is to not try, if that makes any sense. Um, um I mean, I was telling, mm -hmm. I was telling Dennis about it, like, there was this one co-worker that I, I openly flirt with a lot, like, I, this, this is the one that I literally, like, straight up asked her if she wanted to fuck, after, like, she came, <laughs> after she came through and was just talking to me about how horny she was and stuff, and it's just gotten increasingly handsy and stuff, so, like, uh, you know, sometimes this kind of shit just happens when you just talk to people and, like, you know, treat them like people. But I know it sucks, fellas. I know it sucks to some of you, like, internet dwellers out there, but if you want to get with a girl, uh, you gotta talk to them. I know, it's crazy, right? Like, you wouldn't have thunk it, but you do. <laughs> and, ugh. I, I feel like I'm talking myself into a fucking circle at this point. I, and, I don't know. And... And then you grab them in the ass. David, take us away. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm honestly talking myself in circles right here, and I'm making myself sound worse than I think I actually <laughs> am. Bro, all I'm saying is that, like, all you fucking incels out there, you want to you, you wanna get with a lady, just treat them with respect. They they like that, and listen yes. to them and shit, and, and trust me, and then, that, that'll humanize you more, and therefore <laughs> will make them more attracted <laughs> to you in <laughs> the long run. And then firmly ask if you could grab their ass. Uh, yes, and if they say no, and if they say no, and if they don't give you affirmative consent, don't do it. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah, literally, yeah, sometimes shit just happens, shit gets... Uh, I need your affirmative consent! <laughs> shit gets, shit gets, shit gets, <laughs> shit gets, yeah, dude, consent is fucking sexy, that shit turns me on. It literally does, like, when a woman tells you, like, yes, I want to fuck you, it's like, oh. And you, like, just literally put two and two <laughs> together in your brain, like, oh, this is real, I'm actually about to get laid, how long has it been? Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's been 80 years. <laughs> that was literally when I lost my virginity, dude. Like, she told me, like, listen, I'm gonna fuck you, but we're only gonna do this once, which is not what happened. We did it for, like, about a year and a half. After, -ho. after that. And then I just, so I'm like, okay, cool. And then we stared at each other for a minute. Dead silence. Like, oh, you meant now? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. Literally, that's how that's and that's you know the story of how I lost my virginity. Older women, you gotta love them. But uh, yeah, I got a place I need to be, so we're gonna close out the podcast for today. And I somehow and I want to eat. Managed to talk about everything that I think I was gonna talk about: the poker, the games, and stuff like that. Uh, the porn, the the gay porn that I accidentally watched. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty much good so here we go click I'm uh I'm learning I'm actually listening to some audiobooks right now about it on how to brand and market myself as a voice actor but you gotta start somewhere and I'll help with that with my podcast right now I'm on Fiverr ladies and gentlemen that's a freelance website for digital artists I'm on there as a voiceover artist if you like my voice you think I would be fitting for whatever your project is whether it's commercial YouTube promo uh, character work if you think my voice would fit a specific character whatever you want to test my versatility I can deliver a good quality product to you in a timely fashion as well. I'm going to be pretty busy for these next couple of months, so I'm still learning how to market myself in this way, so hopefully I don't get too busy with it, even though I also kind of want to at the same time. But <laughs> if you want to hire me for your voiceover product, I work for cheap, and I can get a timely quality product to you in a quick and timely fashion. So... Please hire me. I'm trying to build up my uh, my repertoire. Uh, I'm trying to really build up my repertoire as a voiceover artist. So, yeah, that'll be in the description down below as uh, well as everything else that you need, which include uh, Denise, if you could. Everyone, I'm leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> no, okay. You can find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts. You can find us, obviously, on YouTube. Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Pocket. Pocket cast and radio poo pubic. <laughs> uh, so, I did. You thought I was going to say son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> but, guys, that was our quick shotgun episode for today. Yeah, um, it's we, a miracle that we're getting one yeah. out this week at all. So, just be, yeah, be, okay, be grateful, cause, fuckers. Yeah, because I had like a lot of interviews lined up and everything, too. So, it's like yeah. we're all kind of busy in our, in our normal lives. Yeah. Just like kind of just bear with us. And, I mean, I don't know. You guys don't let us know, but you know, if you guys want, I mean, tr 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 personally, I, I'm burnt out after like a two hour episode sometimes where it's like the next episode comes around. I'm like, David, we, I want to show it one today. Yeah. No, sometimes not, it's a balance. It's like, it's a balance. It's like, I don't want a Lord of the Rings type fucking episode <laughs> again from like last, like from yesterday. Like, no worries. No worries. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, guys, thank you again for uh, listening. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to talk like Mike Tyson here. Like, like, comment, and subscribe to our content. And uh, ring, make sure to ring the bell and uh, stop unsubscribing from David. I'm going to kick your ass if you do. <laughs> yeah, you, dude, you know what? Like, he could, fu he could fucking kill us. <laughs>
He could kill us all if he it's, wanted to. It's, it's like, I think we forget. That's Mike Tyson. <laughs> Sometimes I think we forget that that's Mike Tyson. <laughs> Can you imagine being in the same fucking recording booth? Like, you're Norm MacDonald, but, yeah. like, that's still Mike Tyson, like, right next to you. <laughs> yeah. Recording with you. Like, like this, that wasn't even, like, that was improv. Like, that shit was real. Like, he was standing next to Mike Tyson in there, and he's just telling, <laughs> he's just telling, like, his, like, co-stars next to him. It's just like, you know what? This guy could fucking kill us. <laughs> this guy could fucking kill all of us if he wanted to. <laughs> it's like, I don't even care if that is the most bulletproof glass on this fucking galaxy. This dude could probably break through it with his bare hands and just basically grab you by the neck and squeeze your stupid chicken dude, I neck. I love the next part of that scene, too, where he just turns to them. He's just like, yo, guys, pick up the motherfucking pace. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah we're, we're coming, Mike. We're coming. <laughs> uh, we're done. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, uh, respect women, because if you do, they might want to slob on your knob eventually. I mean, but obviously, don't go don't simp. Yeah, don't simp. Just don't. Just literally go and go to women with the intention of not but, fucking them, and then they'll want to fuck you. Uh, pretend as if they're not an object of lust. Yeah, but to pretend as if they're just meat that is held up. By bones. Yes. And then who Just, knows? Maybe in the long run. And maybe you could fuck that then they'll let, like, I don't know. <laughs> then they'll let you then they'll let you treat them like that, because low key they're into some kinky dinky shit. Who knows? But we're talking in circles at this point. All that yeah. good shit. Uh follow us on all our platforms. Leave us a good review on Apple Podcasts if you could. That really helps with like uh, getting our podcast noticed. Uh thank you to Justin for the suggestion of us reacting to uh not reacting, but making a smash trailer tier list in a future podcast episode. Maybe we'll do that. That's more maybe. of a visual medium. That would be a big change of pace. Maybe we'll just do like a separate video for it. I don't know. The live stream. We could even do a live stream of it too. Maybe that would that could be that could work mm. as well. Something like that. And also thank you to all the people who told us that they um I had one person, uh, I think it was Dr. Fate or whatever on Twitter who literally told us your podcast changed my life. So I'll uh, get the fuck out of here. No, no, changed me. He said your podcast changed me, which probably bullshit. But thank you so much, Dr. Fate, for saying that. We love you. We Dr. Really... Fate, I know where you live. I'm going to dox the shit out of you. That, 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 no, that's fuck. Don't do <laughs> no, that. No, I'm, he... no, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I'm shout, joking. Shout, outs to Gabe, like... shout outs to my friend Gabe OG for actually saying your podcast helped with my insomnia. So bet. Yeah, honestly, if we could provide that, I'm, I'm good. Damn, like two retards, like fucking just... Like don't fucking you. shit on the uh, the audience, Dennis. They're no, I'm saying no, I'm saying me. Like we're too oh, retards. Like they oh, basically okay. talk, like just talking out of our asses. And like I mean, hey, I don't know. I, I, that kind of rubs you the wrong way if I if I put you to sleep. So it's like <laughs> People do that for a lot of podcasts, man. We're talking in circles. <laughs> at the, yeah, shut yeah. up. We're done. All yeah. that good shit. Follow, like, subscribe. Apple Podcast reviews. We'll be uh, all that good shit. We appreciate you. Um. The lights off, I guess. I usually usually say something funny for lights and, and off instead. If, if, if you have insomnia, I'll kill you. <laughs> turn, we'll turn those lights back on. <laughs> uh, lights off. Peace.